Take your seat, please. Cemetery. On behalf of our director and staff, we would like to thank you for choosing Riverside National Cemetery as your loved one's final resting place. Military honors will include rifle volleys, the playing of taps, along with the folding and presentation of our nation's flag. For anyone sensitive to loud noises, please take the necessary precautions during rifle volley. For those that are able to stand during military honors, please do so. For any active service members and veterans, you may render one final hand salute. For all others, please place your right hand over your heart. Military honors will be conducted today by the United States Marine Corps. Family and friends, at this time, would you please stand for military honors? Salute or right hand over your heart.
accept this presidential memorial certificate in recognition of your husband's honorable service to a grateful nation. Signed, the President of the United States. This time I would like to invite Major Devine to speak. On hearing of Dan's passing, I wrote uh, a tribute uh, to Judy to memorialize the time I had spent with Dan in, in the Marine Corps. Dan coming from Los Angeles, myself coming from Boston. We met on the hallowed Marine grounds of Quantico, Virginia. I wrote this message called Memories of Dan Armstrong, All-American Boy. And I'll paraphrase most of this for you. As I grew up in the 40s, the radio was our source of entertainment. And one of the endearing programs that was on was Jack Armstrong, All-American Boy. And I enjoyed this thoroughly. But in the summer of 1959, Monaco, Virginia, I met the real American boy. That was Dan Armstrong. We were in platoon leaders class together. I didn't know him real well. We were in a different platoon. I sensed his presence. I saw his name tag, John W. There's the real American boy that I used to listen to. Well, once again, two years later, Quantico, Virginia, August of six, 1961, there was Dan once again. Again, we're not in the same platoon, but we see each other. We do things together. We, we know we're going through the same tests that the Marine Corps puts on each and every Marine candidate that would like to become a Marine officer. Then, fast forward a year to June of 1962. I arrive at Pensacola, Florida. Who is down the line a bit, not in my same group? Dan Armstrong. Once again, we get our wings. Dan heads to the hangars, the only 50% existing hangars now but the hangars at Tustin, and I'm down at Camp Pendleton and a VMO squadron. We get our training overseas. I go, Dan's already there. My very first day in country, 1 August, 1965, a gentleman that some of you may know, Norman Ehler, friend to both of us. Norm is acquainting me with what's going on around the squadron area. Call comes in, a medevac's in trouble, eight clicks south of Da Nang. There we go. <laughs> and Norm says, Doug, need you in the co-pilot seat, off we go. We're up in the air, we're ready to come down. We make contact with the pilot that's stuck on the ground, picking up the medevacs, it's Dan Armstrong. Mm -hmm. Things just keep happening. One gun run down, Danny's able to get out of there with his medevac. Then, after the Marine Corps, Dan finds employment with LA Airways. I'm with Lockheed working on a Cheyenne program, which is ill-fated. But then again, Ill LA Airways is ill-fated. They had a severe crash, we had a severe crash. Both programs ended. That was as unfortunate because I had Dan on my list to hire at Lockheed just as the aircraft crashed and wiped out the program. But we got to know each other in the reserves and finally we're in the same squadron. And through the reserves, we start sending Christmas cards. We watch our families grow through means of Christmas card pictures. So I know the Armstrong family 
from a distance. Then my daughter moves to Orange County. We come to visit and Danny and I get together for lunches. And that is a program that we keep going uh, multiple times. And finally, we're able to include our wives getting together for lunch. That was just excellent. So the part that I would like to read to you is my final paragraph, and that was, over the 65 years of knowing Dan Armstrong, he has truly been the all-American boy slash man. Resolute in purpose and service, staunch family man, outstanding manager in the banking industry, exceptionally personable to attract legions of friends, always fun to be with, tremendous leader in any environment, and I've left the best for last. One hell of an outstanding pilot. Mm -hmm. Daniel T. Armstrong, Lieutenant Colonel, USMCR, duty, honor, country, and family. That's the Dan that I know that we love. I'm told that in the absence of a minister, I should give some type of uplifting thought. After studying mindfulness uh, in, uh, oh, 10 years ago, I began to teach mindfulness to combat veterans. And the one point that I tried to get across to veterans, and it's a point that we can all absorb, is this. Light comes from our mind in this plane. Love comes from our heart in this plane. At the meeting is a zone. That zone is a zone of peace. That's the zone that I try to get my combat veterans to settle their minds in. This is the zone where we will always remember Dad in our hearts in peace. Family and friends, this concludes our service here today at Riverside National Cemetery. Your loved one's interment site will be available for viewing today after 4 p.m. and every day in the future. Riverside National Cemetery is open seven days a week from sunrise until sunset. If you are ever having difficulty locating your loved one's final resting place, there is a gravesite locator kiosk at our administration building that can print out a map with an exact location to your loved one's final resting place. Again, you have our sincerest condolences and please drive safely.